obviously it's Brighton at home in the FA Cup, uh, fourth round, 8 p.m. kickoff. And um, look, I think that it's going to be a difficult game, like you said before. It really is. When you're looking at kind of the performances between Spurs and Brighton, I mean, how's it been going the last few games between Spurs and Brighton? It's like very hit and miss, isn't it? Have we played them this year? No, we, no, haven't, we haven't played them yet no. because we got, our game got suspended, didn't it? So um, I remember that last year, last season, we obviously lost 1-0 at the Amex, but then Bale, that Bale goal was the one where he, that was his first goal back at Tottenham. That was a great moment um, in a 2-1 win. The year before that, um, that was when Deli Alli scored the winner um, in, a, in another 2-1 win at home under Mourinho. That 3-0 loss was like the beginning of the end uh, of the Pochettino reign. Um, that was one of the worst moments probably uh, of recent memory um, in a t for, for Spurs. And then um, the 1 0 win, that was um, when Ericsson scored. So I think we've been fairly well. It looks like basically Tottenham win at home and Brighton, and Brighton win at home. That's how it usually works. Yeah. So it um, looks like Tottenham might have the upper hand here. But Brighton, um, as much as they're, uh, they're, a good, they're a very good team, but you, like, I don't think they're going to be resting players in this game because they're ninth in the table. They're doing quite well in the league for their standards. And I think they're going to go strong for the FA Cup because they can't get top four. They're not going to get relegated. So that I would expect them to play their they full team. They've got an outside chance of Europe, though, this season. I'd expect them to play their full team in this game. Yeah, I would expect them to play their full team as well. But, you know, you expect Spurs to play their full team as well um, with a clean bill of health going into it. It's going to be two first teams going at it um, with Brighton very much an attacking side. Spurs a bit more of a pragmatic side. It's going to be interesting to see uh, the way it plays out. When you're looking at the form of the two clubs, I mean... Brighton, they just don't lose games, which is a weird one with Brighton. Yeah. Spurs are very, you know, uh, wishy-washy form at the moment with the wins, loss, wins, loss, wins, loss. But the losses come against Chelsea. Yeah, the losses do come against the big teams. With Brighton, they just seem to to have a knack of not losing games this season. Mm. Um, and even when they look like they're losing games, they pull through in the last minute. How many last-minute goals have they scored this season? So many. Does it go to a replay if it's a draw? Yes, I think so. Because last round it didn't. Did it not? No. Last no. round it wasn't I'll check. a replay. I'll check. So I'm not sure. I, I think it might. I think they're saying replays come back at some point. I don't think. I don't know if it's this round or next round. Um, Brighton are a very good, um, a very good team. That's the truth. Okay, no, no replays. No replays. So the replays the tie, come in the next round. Okay, so the tie has to be over on Saturday. That's exciting. Um, that's good for us. I don't think we want to. We don't want to replay. I don't think. Definitely don't want to go to the Amex. No, I just don't want to replay in general, just because of yeah, games. But, you know, even so, going to the Amex, like we always lose there. Yeah. So, um, in terms of how uh, Brighton play, in terms of them not losing, they're very, very solid defensive. They've got a very solid structure um, in, in their team. They build up from three at the back, but they're very different to Spurs um, in their three at the back, whereas Tottenham play their three at the back very much in a more uh, quicker football, transitional kind of sense. We kind of try to get the ball forward as quickly as possible, especially to the, right, especially to the wing backs. Brighton have very much build their three at the back in a possession, um, possessional kind of aspect. They like to play short, quick passes. They like to um, be very, very patient. I don't see Tottenham as a very patient team um, under Conte so far anyway. Maybe we have to develop that. Um, Brighton can be very patient. They, they have got a lot of patterns in and around the penalty area. And they usually play um, with two strikers up top, um, two pay, like Morpa and Trossard, quite good quality ones as well. And it lends them to conceding very, very few chances usually, even against the better sides. Um, they, they don't concede a, a bucket load of chances, even though they play nice football and play good possession attacking football. And that's kind of the... the it's because I think of their pressing system, they're very... Um, intense. Uh, they've got a high intensity when, when they're in the opposition um, half and they don't like to allow the opposition to build up from the back but when they do get the ball they're very very patient and they've got two wide players in Lampton Cucurella who are very good at dribbling and very pacey. They can keep possession out wide. They've got better fullbacks than us this season anyway. You could argue that. Definitely. We're definitely on the right that's for sure. That's Lamptey, for sure yeah. Um, is better than what we got. I mean we would be very lucky to get Lampton and Cucurella um, is a very good player. Yeah, he's really had a, a, he's had a great player. season, hasn't he? Yeah. Basuma, obviously, he's um, an extremely effective central midfielder. Um, and the back three, I know Duffy um, isn't probably the best, but you've got Dunk and you've got Veltman there, who are very, very... Uh, who I think Dunk, anyway, very underrated centre-back. Is Dan Byrne going to be any, any sort of a miss to them? A bit, but, but I think he was... 
he will be a bit of a miss just because he uh, wants to start for them. But I, th- I don't think he'll be so much that, look, there was a, you know, they were more than happy to let him go, weren't they? Mm-hmm. They didn't, didn't seem to be holding up too much of a fight. And uh, they got Webster as well, who I th- I, I'm i a big fan of Webster. I think he's had a great season, Webster. So I think they, their centre-back options are very underrated. I think they're ve- the, what they're very good at, the centre-back options, uh, are on the ball, building from the back. They're very good passers of the ball, especially Duncan Webster. And Veltman actually as well came through Ajax. And he's also quite decent on the ball, can play right back as well. So they've just got a very difficult team to play against. Um, yeah. even, even the better teams have struggled against them. The only thing with them is... They're, they're, they're great in possession, but they're just really not clinical at all. They create lo- they create chances, <laughs> and they miss so many chances. Like they they usually out XG most teams, as famously we know, Brighton XGFC. Um, but some, but sometimes, well, not only do they do they miss chances, but sometimes they get too comfortable in possession, and and they they kind of struggle to penetrate the opposition defence occasionally and they can get frustrated for example recently against Norwich I think they drew nil-nil like it wasn't like and they were just getting very frustrated by lacking trying to break them down and that can happen with them as well so it'll be very interesting to see how um, our team fares against them because I, I do think from a structural point of view in terms of in game I do I, I'm predicting we're going to struggle but because of our quality Maybe we can, if we keep if we keep it close, we can come through the game. I think. Yeah, you've said you know you've talked about their um, their pros and you've said their uh, in terms of their cons that they don't finish their dinners um, quite often as they'd like to. But where are that? Where else are their flaws? Mm. They have to have some other flaws, surely. I mean, they're ninth in the table, so they're not the perfect team. But they do. They just rarely lose games, don't they? How many games they lost this season? Um, I think it'll be very few. I re- yeah, it's few. It's, I think it's lost. It's less than that. they've only lost four games in twenty two games. I know they've drawn. We've got five, haven't we? We've had um, six. Uh, six. But they've drawn twelve. We've only drawn three. So that's the big difference. That's why we're well. We're, that's why we're um, six points ahead with two games in hand. That's the reason. But uh, th- I guess I think that they're, they're just not clinical. That's that's their biggest flaw. If they, I honestly think, if they had better players in the forward lines, they could easily they could they could be challenging top four. I honestly believe that with with uh, the the way their team's set up. I think Potter's a great manager. They don't have like obvious flaws in their team, like in terms of where where they're really exposed and their massive liabilities. I think the back three is really solid. I think I got two good wing backs. I think maybe you could say the um, in central midfield when they have say Pascal Gross in there or or, or Lalana, that's that's an element where maybe you think that they they can be got at. They can be, they you know, can physically overpower them, but then you got Basuma backing them up, so that that makes it very difficult. I guess the forward line, Trossard and Morpai is what, even though they're decent players, it's what lets them down because uh, as as much as Morpai scored a few goals this season, um, he's not the most physical strikers. He he's known for a bit of shithousery, that's for sure. He likes to play on the edge. And Trossard is more naturally a winger than he is a striker, although he has been playing up front recently. So that's where their biggest flaws are. Maybe if they, if they, if we can keep him out, which I think with our defensive line, I think we can keep them out. Then we, I, th- I think we can create a few moments of quality to to win the game. You know, as much as this, all the positive talk um, that we give to Brighton, you know, they don't win that many games. They really don't. I mean, they've won what five or six games. This they've season? won six. And they've Just, they've lost four, but they've only they've drawn twelve. Yeah, I know. But to win six games is really not good. Um, yeah, from but now to the from what we've seen from them. Yeah, but they're but but you got to think about who they are. They're Brighton, you know what I mean. So to be to 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 be all those only losing four games for a team like Brighton and um halfway through the season is exceptional. I think their fans booed them off the pitch the other yeah. month. <laughs> yeah, and I thought that was ridiculous. I thought it was absolutely <laughs> ridiculous how they can boo them off the pitch. Yeah, and Potter was spot on when he came out and he was like, "What? What do these guys expect?" <laughs> yeah, I think I think but, it was an absolute joke. Look, I think that with the, with what they've got, they should be winning um, more games that they have done. Uh, for sure. Uh, they drop points against very poor sides um, in draws and stuff like that. They, they've won and lost pretty much like, only two games difference. Yeah. It's their draws that really, really let them down. In terms of uh, the players that we spoke about before, like Neil Morpai, <laughs> we talk about how many times Brighton score at the last minute. How many of them are him? Yeah, uh, few. He, he, he just seems to pull through in the last minute. Big shithouser of a player, Neil Morpai. Um, I really like him as a player. But uh, look, if you're talking about a backup strike for Spurs, would you take him at Spurs as a backup? Better than no one, I guess. Uh, so 
I guess, but I don't think I think I'd like to um, look at a higher kind of caliber. But yeah, I probably would take him. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to judge against what we got because we don't have anyone. So yeah. you could you could say would I like anyone there? And I'm like, yeah, why not? But um, so is he good enough for Tottenham? I don't think so. I think we're, we're we're I don't think he's good enough for us. Although I do think he's decent. I don't I like I don't think he's ever going to be like a potential. He's very hot and cold starter for us. He's very hot and cold now. Yeah. Mm. Um, and obviously Cucurella as well on, on the ones to watch um, five uh, fifth in uh, the Premier League for tackles mm. um, and I, like I said before I've been so impressed with Cucurella the way he's so direct the way he's so aggressive the way he gets up and down the pitch I think he's a proper good player did they just sign him this summer or they did in, uh, no, this yeah, summer. summer where'd they get him from Getafe on the very left on the left wing back very position. good player yeah he, and he was very um, highly thought of in his last club as well and I think he does really good stuff on the left hand side. Good attacking wing back. He's got he's actually decent in the final third as well and he's very intense defensively. So um he's one to watch out for. He's been really impressive this season for Brighton, for sure. Um Cucurella. He's gonna be difficult to deal with, especially down our you know, I, I definitely envisage um whoever's playing on our right hand side having a difficult time with him. In terms of uh, the way we can hurt them, and where, where, what do you think is more preferable to set up in the three-five-two or the three-four-three three for this one? Yeah, it's difficult to know because they they they're probably going to set up in a three-five-two. So if we set up in a three-four-three, three, we are probably giving up um, the midfield. Which which if they if they're going to have three in the middle, especially the way Brighton like to play, it's going to be very difficult to um, be able to win the ball back off them. So. In that sense, it's a three. It's a three five five two would be the best. But in terms of the players we have available, well, not I mean we have everyone available. But in terms of the players, uh, in terms of our squad, I think it best suits a three four three to get the best out of the players we have. Um, I think Unless we need just throw Kulisevsky in there straight away. Um, you could throw him in there, uh, or uh, yeah, but I think you know with Lucas there with Son there, uh, Son coming back. Sorry, you probably want both of them in the team. That's the thing. Uh, and also, that's probably going to be the best way to hurt them, as much as uh, maybe having Kane and Son up front in a two. I guess it could work. I mean, I, I think it would work, actually, if we put a midfield three of maybe Hoybier, Skip and Winks, or if Ben Tenkel's already put him in. Um, I think that I, I think the the best way to battle this Brighton side would probably be 3-5-2. But I'd, I, I, have a, I just wonder whether he'll do it. I think I think he would do a 3-4-3. I've got a, a feeling. Lot of, a lot of people, I mean, maybe not a lot of people, but people around social media seem to think that 3-5-2 is definitely more suited to us and we play our better football at 3-5-2. Do you agree with that? Uh-huh. I, I, I definitely think we've played our best for Wanda Conte in a 3-5-2. Our best two, our best two performances, you'd probably Liverpool say... And who's the other one? Liverpool and Leicester, Leicester I would say. Yeah. I would say those are probably our best two performances and those are both a 3-5-2. Yeah. So I think that definitely lends. Um, but, you know, we have had good performances in a 3-4-3. Palace at home, we played pretty well. That was a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, Not we had the a same good... level of those two games, though, was it? No. We played, um, who was it, Norwich and Brentford, which we won. That was both 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, Southampton, you know, away. That was a poor performance. That was 3-5-2. So Palace no... away? No, uh, Southampton away. Southampton away, yeah. Yeah, so... It's not like we've been amazing every time we played a three-five-two, but we have played our best football in a three-five-two. That's the truth. But you look the most exciting in that in that in that yeah. formation, like that that Palace game that you were talking about. Yeah, we were all right and we dominated them for the whole game, but it wasn't like we were exciting that game. Well, what was it? Uh, no, I guess well, we were two 0 up in the first half. So yeah. and then it went out to ten men. It was a dead game. So. Um, uh, but we have had also against West Ham at home in the cup. We played three four three. We were okay. We were pretty good in that game. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit more nuanced than just we're much better in a, in a three five two. But I do think that's been you know, where our best football is. But now with Kulusevski here, I think with just the shape of our squad in general, unfortunately, I think we're be, we're kind of being forced to play a three four three in a way because. We've got so much talent up front. We can't afford to only play two of um, Bergwijn, Son, Lucas, Kane and Kulusevski. We have to play at least three of them, I think, um, in a game. Um, unless you, maybe you're putting Kulusevski behind. And also in the midfield options... You can do that in, a, in both formations. What? Play three of them. Um, only if it's Kulusevski, really. Yeah, what's the problem with that? Yeah, but what about Bergwijn and Lucas? You're pretty much not giving them a role. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be the same role every game. Different games call for different systems. So I think that in a 3-5-2, you can play three of them, which is Con Kane, Son, and Kulisevsky, or even Lucas Moura. Yeah, but you could, you, could, you could argue that's also a 3-4-3 three, three, in yeah. a way. Fine. But, um, if you're playing one of the forward players. But if you're playing th also because of... Um, they'll be asked to do a lot more kind of um, work in the middle of the park if it's Kulisevsky or Lucas Moura mm. there in terms of if it's a 3-4-3, three, three, they won't be really asked to do that work. In work in the middle of the park. Mm. Um, I th well, they, they'll they be more anyway. covering the wing, the wings, yeah. Um, also, with our centre mid options, we only have four. So whether we want to play three of them on a regular basis, that's very risky, I think. Um, unless, well, I guess it's, I, if we have one injury, it'll be okay. But if we have more than one injury, all the time it come, comes a bit tricky. Well, we've got Ribeiro, Dyer, Davis. No, I'm talking about the centre mids. Oh, centre mids, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's why Kulusevski might have to uh, to help out there. I think from now on. I think I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But it, I wouldn't be surprised if we play three five two in this game or anything like that. Um, like in, but on a regular. But I think three four three is going to be our regular formation. That's mm -hmm. my gut. That's why. That's what I'm feeling with the with the shape up of the squad. But I, I do think three five two would be the best option against this. Um, well, I say that. That, that that kind of means we have to dominate on the wings in a three five two, and whether we have the quality to do that against Brighton, I don't know. If we play three four three, then you're doubling up on the wide areas, and then all of a sudden you have more ability to um, get some joy there. Because if it's three five two, it's literally wing a wing back against wing back with everyone else in the centre. Yeah, that's the problem. Well, it's going to be interesting to see uh, which system we do go for. I mean. It's going to be imperative for us to win this midfield battle uh, this weekend. How do you see the game going, and uh, what score prediction are you going for? Honestly, um, I think it's going to be. I think Brighton are going to be well in this game. I, I, I think it's going to be very close. Is there uh, extra time? Yeah, extra time. yeah, extra time. Extra time. The only straight penalties. The only Carabao. Um, obviously, they got other players as well. We haven't mentioned Welbeck, who's been in recently decent scoring form. Scored didn't he score against Chelsea not too long ago? Um, yeah, I wouldn't call it. Well, he scored like two in his last yeah few games. Um, three this season. Three this season. When it, I think Brighton are going to be well in this game. I really, I think the way they play, I even if we get an early goal, like I think Brighton have shown they're they're willing to stick with, with the way they play. They're willing to stick by their system. They're willing to not compromise and not panic. And even if they get a late goal to get to get themselves back in the game, they're willing to wait to that. So. I, th I envisage Brighton dominating possession. I think Tottenham are going to be look, looking to catch them out um, on out the other end. Um, I think it's and I think it's going to be very close. I, I, I think it's going to be long periods in this game where Brighton got the other upper hand. I, I definitely see that, and, that, and I'm and I'm worried about that. And I'm, but but I think defensively, if Romero is back, or even if Romero is not back, if it's Sanchez, Dyer, Davis. Pretty sure Romero is back. He's back, but when I'm, I'm talking about back in the starting eleven. It could be he's not, it's not guaranteed, is I it? I think yeah, I, but I do have a feeling he will start. But anyway, go on. But even if he's not definitely back in the in the team, um, I do think we will, we should be okay in when it comes to um, keeping them keeping them out. As uh, if we, I think we should be okay keeping them out. I think defensively we're going to be all right. We're going to be solid. Um, but Brighton will dominate a lot of the ball, so it's going to get frustrating. As long as we keep our shape and keep our heads, I think we should be okay. But it's going to be close. I don't see like a 2-0 or anything like that, or 3-0. If we win, it's going to be by one goal. That's my prediction. But I do think we'll win by a goal. I think it'll be like 1-0 or 2-1, something like that. Yeah, it's interesting because since 2014 or since 2017, since they come in the Premier League, We've only beaten them by one goal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, apart from the first time, which was 2 0. The other one was 1 0, 2 1, 2 1. That was when Aurier scored uh, the fluke. He yeah, it. exactly. Um, so, I mean, it is usually what you're saying. It is they usually come to. But even more so now at Potter. You know what I mean? They haven't always Potter, had Potter. Yeah, Potter have they? was there the last two seasons, right? Yeah. So, um, and those both games have been both 2 1. Um, so I can see it going the same way. I'm going to go for a 2 1 win to Spurs. I think. They always give us a game when they come to Tottenham. Uh, they really do. Uh, they're a very good side, attacking side, and they're going to give us problems. But it's a, it's a good point this guy made. Uh, I, AZ said, Brighton have bought a new striker, which they did in January. Top goal scorer in Belgium they bought. Oh, yeah, that was it, yeah. Well, so, we'll see. He'll probably make his debut. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, if, if he's... Made, you, sometimes with these players, for example, I know it's not the best example, but like Amizaki, right? 
had um, he came to the Premier League. Oh, <laughs> Miyazaki, go on. And he was, for six months, he just smashed out, didn't he? And because he's an unknown quantity. He was like top goal scorer or something for six months and then he fell off. But sometimes these strikers... So players like that, isn't it? I know, but sometimes these strikers, even though they're not coming from the best league, um, if, you know, Brighton's scouting is no not, not to be uh, trifled with. They've got a very good scouting network. So if they really believe this striker can come in and do something in the Premier League and um, considering he's got, he's got a very good goal scoring record out in Belgium, you've got, you've got to watch out for him, I think. Mm. I think that if we stick to our gun, stick to our game... Um, and be, you know, and stick to our job in midfield and defence, I think we win this game. I really do. Uh, Brighton struggle to win games. Uh, the longer this game goes on, I think... Um, I just don't want it going to penalties. <laughs> penalties will be a bad situation for us. It'll be interesting to see with, the f with no points up for grabs for a draw because they've drawn so many games. What kind of Brighton we see? Do we see a Brighton maybe come out of their shell a bit more and, and go energy, for throw? Man. They've got a lot of energy, so the later on, on it gets, it's not like they're going to tire. Um, no, but I know, but, but, you know, against games, for example, like against Chelsea, when they they drawn twice recently, both games, it was very, very tight. Like, Ch Brighton were not um, coming out their shell too much, very compact, but they know, because they know a draw is good enough for a point, so there's no reason for them to come out their shell a bit. But in this kind of game, in a cup game... They might have to. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether they go a bit more attacking, maybe they really go for, try and try and create as many chances as possible, or they still cr have that compact nature about them. It'll be interesting to see what, what kind of Brighton we see. It's mad that, like, when you're looking at Brighton's last away games, right? Their last away game, they played Leicester, mm. um, scored in the 82nd minute the equaliser. Game before that, they played Everton. Um, they scored late as well. Chelsea, they scored in the last minute to equalise. Southampton, uh, they scored in the last 98th minute to equalise. West Ham, they scored in the 89th minute to equalise. I mean, <laughs> every crazy. away game, they just seem to pull it through in the last minute. Yeah, it's madness. It's absolutely nuts. Against Liverpool, what happened there? They uh, Not in the 89th minute. Yeah, but, but can you they... do that in a cup game? You know what I mean? A cup game is a bit different to a league game. Well, no. Why? Cause, cause w well, you can to take the extra time to see what happens. Yeah, but that's not, how like you, that. that's not how you think about it in cup games. Do you? Think... It's not the same, it's not the same uh, mentality. No, it's not. And I think that that's probably why... Brighton never do that well in the Cups because draws actually stand them in better stead in the league than it will do in the Cup. And, and they kind of go out in the Cups most of the time in the early rounds. Mm. So it tells me, a, it, it holds me in a bit, a bit more positive that we are going to go through because in the Cup games, they concentrate a lot more on the league because that's more like suited to their play in uh, terms of scoring last minute goals, coming through draws, plenty of draws. You're not going to go through in the Cup competitions with draws, are you? So True. Everyone talks about... Um who the new United manager is going to be. Yeah. Pochettino, Ten Hag. Should Potter be in the ring? Um, potentially. But I think when you're talking about managers like Poch, I think he, he should be way ahead of uh, Potter in the, in the runnings. Mm. So I think he should definitely be within the question. But I don't think he'll actually get it. Do you think he would be a do a good job at United if he was there? Yeah, I don't see why not. But it's also... You, you're, as a manager, you know, sometimes when you're at a smaller club like that, it's just a, a club that suits you. Um, mm. And when you go to a bigger club, sometimes you could be found out a little bit and then maybe you need to go back to a little club. Maybe he needs to go on a bit of a progress before he gets to Man United. Maybe he needs to go on stepping stones a bit, you know, gradually um, increasing the, the clubs of size because the Man U job is a massive job. Yeah, if I was Everton, who they got now? They got um, Lampard. If I was Everton, I would have just, maybe it was impossible for them. I don't know what they did, but I would have just gone all out, pulled out all the stops to get Potter through the door. But I think Potter at the moment, He's reluctant to leave mid-season. I think that's that's reality with him. So he was um, reluctant to join us at the end of last season. He was. So um, I wish. I, I think he's doing a great job. I really do. I'm a big fan of his, and I would like to see where his uh, career goes. I'm definitely going to keep keeping keep an eye on. And I if he does in the future become available, and we know we don't have Conte here, I would definitely consider it. Yeah. Uh, well, you were banging on about it last summer, mm -hmm. weren't you? But I think that in terms of Potter for his next role. I'd like to see, I mean, you know what? He would have been perfect for someone like Newcastle. Imagine Potter uh, taking over the reins at Newcastle with all that war chest behind him. I yeah. thought that would have been unbelievable to see. Um, but I think that that's the kind of stature of clubs he needs to go to, like clubs with money, 
but um, fighting for like the European spots in the league. I think that's probably going to be his next step. Yeah, I agree. Um, and if he can get into Europe with Brighton, what an achievement that would be. Um, Charlie Ekosha has just tweeted saying, Kulusevski and Ben Tenkor are expected to be in the match day squad tomorrow. Hopefully a chance for them to get some minutes ahead of a Premier League double header, which it's, obviously we've got Southampton and Wolves. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because the last two managers, Nuno aside, in terms of Poch and Jose... Um, when we got new players under Poch, it took them ages to bed into the team. Jose Mourinho just liked to shove them straight in. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Conte likes to do. I mean, do you mm. know of any previous of what he's done at Inter and Chelsea and stuff like that? I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember about his new signings. I know Ericsson obviously took him a while, but that, I don't. That wasn't, was a different case. Yeah, though, it was different. It? Wasn't kind of because I think he did shove him straight in and then t- and then took him out for a while yeah. and then put him back in. So shoving him straight in, I mean, that's a sign, then, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm if trying. It, I'm, try, I'm trying pattern, to remember. I'm trying to remember uh, when he was at Chelsea when he made signings. If he put them straight on or not? Um, off the top of my head, I remember who do they have when they that first season they won the league? They had they, can, they had Kante, uh, the, who they signed. I'm pretty sure he went straight in. Uh, Marcus Alonso when he signed, he was. Um, he went. He, I think he's pretty sure he went straight in as well. I'd like to see them both go straight in. To be honest, I really would. The thing is, like someone like I know Lucas Moura past couple of games hasn't been great, but re, but since Conte's come in, Lucas has been pretty good. Mm-hmm. So whether like he thinks, oh, because usually with these, these kind of players, you only put them straight in if you've got a if 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 you've got a player who's maybe not playing so well, and you're just going to give him a chance straight away. But Lucas is kind of I know last couple of games maybe not, but he has in general been playing well. So whether he decides he's going to put him straight in. I don't know. And also our centre mids. I think Skip Hoybier and Winks all been playing well recently. So whether he thinks I'm going to put Pentank all straight in, I don't think he will. It's I don't not think just he about will. playing well. Maybe it's about um, him thinking that these players can add something different and add something more than the players. Yeah, but they've has. had one training session. Yeah. So but He knows the players. I know, but he doesn't know them that well. He hasn't managed them before. No, he hasn't. So I think... I'd be very surprised if they go straight in. I, if I, I'm, I'm going to predict they're both going to be on the bench, but we'll see. Because I think it's a big game. I think if you're talking about a league game, I think there's probably more chance. But a cup game, when it's if you lose, you're out. I wouldn't want them to go straight in in this game. I think, I think I, it's a big I game. I think I agree with you. I think I agree with you in terms of, well, to be honest, every game's a big game from now until the end of the season. But I th- yeah, I know. But in terms of um, them coming straight back in, I think I agree with you. I don't think they will. Uh, but I would like to see them uh, come straight in. I really would. I'd like to see them get minutes. I wouldn't be, I'm not going to be angry, obviously. If obviously I not angry. I would just like to see it. If I see the squad and they're um, starting, I'm obviously going to be excited. It's nice to see new signings, isn't it? That's and also, it definitely is a bit of a statement if um, one of them starts. Um, I think that would be a bit of a statement from Conte, saying like this guy is I like this guy is going to be a, a big player for us. I think putting them straight back in to puts that message out. But also, I think in this game, I'm not saying it's a risk playing them. The Southampton game could be a better game to bring mm, them in. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Because in this game, if we lose, we're out. And let's say Kulusevski or Bentecourt come in and they don't have the best game and, you know, immediate leagues have only had one training session. Um, it's a, that's, that's where the bit of risk comes in. And I think it's a massive game. If we, we have to win. Like, I know we have to beat Southampton and the Wolves as well, but I really want to win the FA Cup. I think it's so important we have a good cup run. Um, especially with with um, no other avenue for a trophy this year. So um, if we're if we're going to be that serious about the FA Cup, I think they start on the bench in this game. Mm. All right. Um, so wait, you didn't give us a score prediction. I, I'll go two one, two one as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, who's going to score the goals? Um, Harry Kane and Human Son. I'm going to go for Harry Kane and Kulu off the bench. Kulu off the bench. To give us the winner, yeah. That's what I'm going for. That would be an epic. Yeah, Kulu, that would be. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but that is the match preview. <laughs>